Welcome to episode two of Best Brush Cartridge 2021. And like the title said today, we're gonna look at the 45 Colt. And there it is, my son's Winchester 1892 and 45 Colt. What a beautiful gun. And um, some might say, well, why aren't you doing the 3030 for a brush, uh, brush cartridge? And we'll do that in episode three, I hope. And, uh, but I've been wanting to shoot this guy. We haven't had it on the channel in a long time. And if you notice the recoil to my shoulder, the hand loads in this 45 Colt at medium, at the short range, uh, pack a punch and so I'm going to declare this to be a legitimate short range brush cartridge and a lot of guys like the 45 Colt so we're we're going to um, we're going to take a close look at that now there were three um, oh and speaking of which we're going to do three different kinds of ammunition number one we're going to do the 230 grain jacketed soft or jacketed hollow point from Remington and these came from Tom. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. And then we're going to shoot the some hand loads. This is the 200 or the 300 grain XTP mag. Traveling at about 1500 feet per second. Starline brass. And then we're also going to shoot another hand load. And this is the cast performance 265 grain hard cast wide flat nose bullet with gas check. These are traveling in excess of 1700 feet per second. So we're gonna do three different cartridges, three different bullets, and uh, we could do a lot more. In fact, I've got some uh, buffalo bore deer grenades that we're gonna take a look at down the road once we kind of br bring everything together. Um, but the buffalo bore deer grenades, being a medium soft, w big hollow point cast bullet, they would really deform on the brush coupons. And, um, and so I don't wanna, there's no point in trying those, but a lot of folks would say, hey, I'm not gonna hit any brush. And, um, and let's talk about that in a little bit. I wanna show you a demonstration and it may surprise you, um, maybe not. But also speaking of brush, here is our coupon. And if you watched previous videos series, you, saw, you know what these coupons are. And, um, and so we're gonna shoot three shots at a target, unimpeded, and then we're gonna put up a coupon like this, put a bullet through it on the way to the same target three different times, and we're gonna check for deflection. That's the purpose of all this. But people said in the comments last week, why are those sticks so big? And, um, and I will just, I'm gonna demonstrate in a little bit. Um, well, it might just surprise you. Sorry about that phone. Might just surprise you. But at the end of the video, if you'll stick around, we're gonna reshoot the 35 Remington. We're gonna put three shots through smaller coupons. And we're gonna do the same thing with the 45 Colt with smaller sticks and see if the deflection with either the 45 Colt or the 35 Remington, if it's reduced dramatically by going through smaller sticks. So I hope you'll stick around for that. But uh, right now, let's get set up and uh, do some shooting. And we're gonna kind of consolidate things, pull it a little bit tighter together this week so the video is not quite so long because I do wanna shoot those smaller sticks. So let's get shooting and uh, see what comes. OK, 
Okay, these groups are going to be a little bit bigger than last week if you watched last week's video because obviously I don't have a low power variable optic on this gun like I did the Marlin 336. But we'll be able to get relative group size and relative position nonetheless. So let me go set up the coupons. Wow, that's a beast. So both downrange cameras timed out while I was shooting my 265 grain hardcast wide flat nose gas check bullet from Cast Performance. So let's just skip forward to the end of the segment and, um, and then we'll take a look at those targets. You know, I was just thinking about those guys that film their own deer hunts. My goodness, what a challenge. I can't even keep things straight on a controlled set like this. But anyway, let's take a look at these targets. And uh, the first one here is with our Remington High Terminal Performance Factory Ammo. But uh, I've got multiple shots here. The ones that are in orange are ones that I did before I, um, it, it just had the original brass bead uh, on Austin's rifle on the front sight, the brass bead, and I was really struggling to find the, the front sight in this dark target. And so I've got a shot here, shot here, and a shot here. So, I, um, so I've marked those in orange, and then I put an orange, some orange paint on the front sight of Austin's rifle, and I reshot that first group, and I got one, two, three, so I did better the second time around once the front sight was marked. And then so there's our three shot group right here. And then I shot one shot way up here 
one shot way over here and one shot that didn't even make it on the backer board. So, and those were the three shots with the coupons. And so with coupons, I was all over the map, you know, at uh, with just 10 yards between the coupon and the target. So the, the Remington factory loads, 45 Colt, really didn't do very well here in this test. And then we went to the 300 grain uh, Hornady XTP mag, and we had one shot, first shot, second shot, or first shot, second shot, third shot, and then we had one, two, three here with coupons. And so we had about an inch deflection, and that sounds great, but all three of these bullets show signs of having been upset. And so that means that your bullets are not going to be going into, even though you're staying on target better, you're not going to be going into the, um, into the uh, intended target nose first. So that's not good either. And then we have the, that was the 300 grain Hornady XTP mag. And then we have the 265 grain wide flat nose gas check bullet hard cast from Cast Performance. And we had one, two, three, really nice little group here at 25 yards, open sights. And then with coupons, we had one, two, and three. So we had three shots strung out this way. So the center of the group is pretty, is right on top of the original group, pretty much. But again, there's indication that the bullets are destabilized. And so with those bullets destabilized, you really just can't predict what's going to happen and where, but they aren't going to necessarily be hitting your quarry nose first with resultant deep penetration. So is it because our coupons are too big? Are they, are they um, unfairly large? And what I want to do right now, before we shoot these really small coupons, with brush that is less than half in diameter. In fact, here, I'll give you guys a close-up look at this. The coupons on your right are, are uh, less than half the diameter of the, or about half the diameter or less than the ones we've been shooting. And so before we do that, I've got a lawn chair out here in the woods. It's at 65 yards from here. And, um, and it's kind of a neutral color. It doesn't look like a deer. It's not the same color as the deer, but I'm gonna set the camera up and then we're going to zoom in to about um, one power roughly and see from here what that lawn chair looks like. I'll get a really good focus on it. And, uh, and then you can tell me whether or not you think you would shoot if that chair was a deer, would you shoot at that deer? So let me get set up and we'll take a look at that chair and then you tell me and then we'll walk down to the chair and see what we find. I think you know where we're going with this. Okay, there is that chair and this is exactly the view that you would have had from back at the shooting bench. In fact, let me turn around here, give you some orientation. There's the 20 yard target that we were shooting at. And there's the shooting bench back there. And so let's walk down here and take a look at what we find. And this pile of trash right here this morning caught my shoelace and I went down in a heap. But there it is right there. And this bright stick in the sunshine was hard to see from 65 yards. And that is actually the same size as the brush coupons that we have been using. And so there's our deer, and that guy is 20 yards beyond the stick that we just looked at. Now you can hardly see that stick at all because the sun is not shining on it. So the point is, if you're going to hunt in woods like this, now I, of course I put that stick in the ground just to make a point. But if you're going to hunt in woods like this, um, it's going to be really hard to guarantee that you don't hit something. And that's, the, that's why I wanted to do this video, was 
Um, not to condemn shooting in the woods, because we're all going to hunt in the woods if we have the opportunity. But we just need to be aware, very sensitive, to the fact that there can be obstacles in the woods that we cannot see unless, especially if we're uh, stalking, still hunting, we call it down here, where you're walking spot and stalk, other people call it, um, then your chances at a deer are going to come and go quickly. Whereas if you stand hunt, like I'm going to do myself here, then you have more opportunity to prepare. So so I think I'd, I don't want to keep beating on that, but that's the reason we're doing this brush cartridge video series and starting with deflection because it's something that people don't talk about. Uh, history has us talking about brush busting cartridges and guys are sure that their 3030 is going to shoot through everything that's that uh, that's in the way and and so I just wanted to address that and give people a realistic view. That's my only intent. But if we can identify a a bullet that is um, that is less sensitive to less sensitive to brush, then um, that's a data point that we can all file away. And depending on where we're hunting and how we're hunting and stuff, then it might uh, it might help form our decisions. So now, let's get those small coupons set up. And by the way, the other thing that was mentioned in the comments had to do with the bullet tumbling and re-stabilizing base first. And, um, and, and it is a hypothesis on my part, but I have been thinking about it. I doubt that we'll ever get our hands on a true high-speed camera to be able to see that happening. But I have a, um, a test set up, a test scenario that I think will be able to demonstrate whether or not it's true or false. And so you can look forward to that in the next uh, week or two or three. And, um, and I'll post a video uh, just about that very thing and see if we can demonstrate it, or if we can demonstrate that it's not true. So, um, by the way, I decided to shoot the 180 or the, two, the 200 grain cast performance gas check bullets cast performance wide flat nose hard cast bullets instead of the instead of the Remington factory ammo mainly because I only had two bullets and I need six so uh, and I'd like to see if this guy does much better through the smaller brush it would be a great data point so let's send these three rounds down range real quick and then we'll set up those teeny brush coupons Okay, 35 Remington. Um, that does look like a little bit of an improvement there, but and I do not see. Do I see any sign? There's one. Yes, there is. There's one bullet right here that shows signs of destabilization. So even with the smaller coupons, we still got destabilization on uh, on one bullet at least. Now the 45 Colt 265 grain cast bullet. You know the order better than I do because I haven't looked at the footage yet. But I do know that that um, this was that first deflection right here that I was pretty sure that was my fault. And then this one right here. And then this is one of the shots with coupon and then I think these three somewhere in here. But anyway, you saw the shots, but there's still a pretty good bit of deflection there. And yes, there is some sign of destabilization as well. There is in this one for sure, even though it's a bad shot, it's a little bit off center. So even with a smaller coupon, 
Is it better? Um, yes, perhaps it's better. You tell me in the comments because it's kind of late in the afternoon and I'm hot and tired. But, uh, um, and with open sights this time of day, it's hard for me to shoot my best. But the, um, but the 35 Remington seemed to do better on this test than it did with the larger coupons. Is it enough to declare victory? No, because there's still sign of destabilization there. And so you don't want to hunt anywhere intentionally where you're going to have a destabilized. I mean, you're not going to want to intentionally launch a bullet that's going to be destabilized at the deer or hog. Um, but hey, you know, if you hunt in the woods, like I said, uh, it's eventually going to happen. So we just want to minimize and uh, make sure our shots are clear as best we can. That's always the and and we're not talking about as i said in the last video i would never condone shooting through a thick brush at a game animal it's just i don't believe it's safe nor is it ethical and so what we're talking about are the incidental accidental contacts like i showed when we walked down to the deer chair um, that's what we're talking about here so uh, brush contact is with a bullet even with a heavy bullet in the 35 remington or the 45 colt still gets destabilized but we have more to try and next week we've got some uh, some really cool bullets cartridges for the 3030 and i uh, hope you'll come back next week to see episode three so uh, and by the way when i was changing targets down there and i'll close with this i caught a little movement out of the corner of my eye and check this out i'll see you in the next video